All living organisms are composed of cells. Cells are responsible for all anatomical and physiological features of all body systems. Different cell types can vary greatly in shape and size, but they all have a common structure and similar components. A typical cell is enclosed in a plasma membrane and contains a nucleus and a cytoplasm. The plasma membrane serves as the cell's boundary, controlling the traffic of substances in and out of the cell. It is also the site of communication between the cell and its environment. The membrane consists mainly of two layers of phospholipids with their hydrophilic heads, the phosphate groups, facing the aqueous environments inside and outside the cell, and their hydrophobic fatty acid tails facing in together. Other membrane lipids include cholesterol, which is essential to membrane structure and fluidity, and glycolipids, which maintain membrane stability and facilitate cell-to-cell -cell interactions. The lipid membrane is dotted with membrane proteins, of which there are two types, integral or transmembrane proteins, which span across the membrane, some passing through multiple times. Some transmembrane proteins have a small carbohydrate chain on the outside of the cell. And peripheral proteins, which attach to the membrane on the inside. A peripheral protein typically functions together with an integral protein. Membrane proteins fulfill a variety of functions. As receptors, or receptor-associated proteins, they receive messages from outside the cell. For example, a non-steroid hormone must bind to a membrane receptor and act via several other membrane proteins to activate a cellular response. Each receptor is specific to a certain molecule. As ion channels or transport proteins, they help move charged particles and large uncharged polar molecules across the cell membrane. As adhesion molecules, they help cells adhere to each other and to the extracellular matrix. As enzymes, they catalyze reactions that are required outside the cell but in the vicinity of the cell membrane. Transmembrane glycoproteins also serve as surface antigens, determining the cell's identity. On top of the cell membrane, some cells have surface extensions that carry out specialized functions. Examples include microvilli that increase the surface area in the small intestine, cilia that move mucus in the respiratory tract, and flagella that are responsible for the movements of sperm cells. The nucleus contains genetic material, the DNA, and is where DNA replication and transcription, the major step of gene expression, take place. Most cells have one nucleus, with the exception of red blood cells, which have none, and some other cells that have multiple nuclei. The nuclear envelope surrounding the nucleus consists of two membranes, inner and outer, each of which is a phospholipid bilayer. The envelope is dotted with nuclear pores, protein complexes that provide controlled passage between the nucleus and cytoplasm. Chromosomes are strands of DNA wrapped around proteins. Under a light microscope, chromosomes are only visible during cell division when they are highly condensed. Instead, the most prominent feature of the nucleus is the nucleolus, the area around the clusters of ribosomal RNA genes. This is where ribosomal RNAs are made and where ribosomes are assembled. Ribosome then move to the cytoplasm to fulfill their function in protein synthesis. The cytoplasm includes a gel-like liquid called cytosol, various organelles, and cytoskeleton. The endoplasmic reticulum, ER, Golgi apparatus, and vesicles constitute the intracellular membrane system. The ER is a network of connected flattened sacs called cisterni. Its membrane is continuous with the outer nuclear membrane. Part of the ER appears rough, as it is covered with ribosomes. This is where the synthesis of secretory and transmembrane proteins take place. These proteins have a signal sequence within their amino terminus, which, as soon as it emerges from the ribosome, targets the RNA ribosome complex to the ER membrane, where translation continues. The emergent polypeptide enters the ER membrane as it is being translated. Transmembrane proteins, identified by the presence of a hydrophobic stretch, stay in ER membranes while secretory proteins are released into the ER lumen.
The smooth part of the ER synthesizes lipids and lipid components of cell membranes. As lipids are produced, they are inserted into the ER membrane. Membrane proteins, lipids, and secretory proteins are then packaged into vesicles to be transported to the Golgi, where proteins undergo post-translational modifications. Vesicles pinch off from ER membranes, travel to Golgi apparatus, fuse with Golgi membranes, and release their content. The Golgi is a stack of separated cisternae. Each contains a set of enzymes responsible for a certain step in protein maturation. Similar vesicles transport lipids and proteins from one cisterna to another, and ultimately to their destinations, the plasma membrane, lysosomes, or storage vesicles. The destination of a protein is typically determined by a signal sequence acting as an address tag within the protein. The ER is also a major site for metabolism and storage of calcium, whose release is a trigger for many cellular processes. Lysosomes are vesicles containing hydrolases that break down macromolecules into their building units, which can then be recycled. The enzymes are activated by the acidic environment within lysosomes. In white blood cells, lysosomes digest phagocytized bacteria and play a role in immune response. Mitochondria are best known as the cell's powerhouses. This is where energy is extracted from food compounds and stored in energy-rich molecules. A mitochondrion has two membranes. The inner membrane has multiple folds called Christi. Two of the three main steps of cellular respiration occur in the mitochondria, citric acid cycle in the matrix and oxidative phosphorylation on the Christi. Cytoskeleton is a network of protein filaments that fulfill a variety of functions. There are three types of filaments, microfilaments, intermediate filaments, and microtubules. Microfilaments are made of the protein actin. They enable muscle contraction, provide support for microvilli, produce cell movements, and play a role in cell division. Intermediate filaments are made of different proteins in different cells. Their roles are mostly supportive. Microtubules are large tubes of 13 protofilaments. Each is a long chain of tubulin dimers. A centriole is a short cylinder of nine triplets of microtubules. A cell typically has two centrioles lying perpendicular to each other, forming a structure called centrosome. Centrosome serves as a microtubule organizing center, from which microtubules grow out into the cytoplasm. In non-dividing cells, microtubule networks hold organelles in place. During cell division, they form the mitotic spindle that guides chromosome movements. Microtubules are also responsible for the movements of cilia and flagella. Are you a fan of Alila medical videos? If so, you will love our new Alila Academy. Based entirely on our highly effective animated mini lectures, our courses are designed to follow a typical syllabus in each subject. Each topic is extensively illustrated and comes with quizzes to test your understanding, downloadable PDFs for a quick review, as well as images for you to use in school projects or presentations. We are known for producing highly effective animated videos that explain the most difficult concepts in record time. We have no doubt that our courses will be a lifesaver for both students and teachers alike. So do come check them out. Alila Academy, clear, concise, effective, with extensive visual resource. No one explains like Alila does.